in 1 Thessalonians 5. It's a verse everybody here probably knows and could say from memory. And that's what I'm going to preach to you about here tonight. Verse number 18. It says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Father, we ask your blessing upon the message here. I pray, God, that uh, you'd just touch these lips of mine. Help me to say what you once said. We pray, Lord, it be a blessing to you, first of all. Lord, that it might honor and glorify you. And pray that you'll help me to say the things that are right to say here. And God, you might help somebody here, Lord, that uh, may be just struggling with some things. That uh, maybe you could help them out, Lord, with their, a little bit of thankfulness in their hearts, Lord. And maybe just get a little different view, a little different outlook on some things in their lives. And Father, I pray that uh, you'll get glory from it. And we thank you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I told you I'm going to preach uh, out of this verse here, and it's a, a pretty common verse, and you, know, you guys know it, and everything give thanks. So that means you're supposed to give thanks in every, every single thing that happens, good and bad. And that's not always the first reaction and the first response, and a lot of times it's not the second response or the third response, or, you know, sometimes it comes even later. But for a Christian... Uh, Thankfulness is very crucial to your growth in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's kind of a staple of the faith here. Uh, if you flip over just one book, uh, well, two books, actually, well, no, it's one book. One book over to Colossians here. And I just look at a couple of things just real quickly before I get into the message. But in chapter 1 and verse 3, Paul writing to the Colossians here. Uh, he says, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Come over to chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 6, he says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein, with thanksgiving. Now in this, this particular passage, he's telling you that one of the ways to abound in Jesus Christ and, and part of being rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith is all of that is to abound with thanksgiving. And so thanksgiving ought to be a major part of your life as a Christian. You don't really understand an abundant life in Jesus Christ without giving Him thanks. And very frequently... Look here at Colossians 3, verse 15. Uh, Colossians 3, 15, he says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Verse 17, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Then over in chapter 4, Verse number 2, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Now Paul just mentions that again and again and again to one little church, one little group of Christians there, and he keeps on mentioning to be thankful. And so I'm here to preach to you tonight, just for a little bit, this just one thought that thankfulness makes all the difference. And, you know, I don't know what's going on in your life, what you've been through just recently, just lately or whatever of that nature. But I do know this, according to what I see in the Scripture, a spirit of thankfulness makes all the difference to how you go through a thing. And whether you come out uh, being better or bitter has a lot to do with whether or not you're going to be thankful with what God's done in your life. If you will, turn to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter number 1. I think a whole lot of the Christian life is simpler than what a lot of people try to make it. Honestly, there's, there's a real simplicity to serving the Lord and to being a Christian that is just, it, I mean, simply just trying to please the Lord. It, that's a simple thing. That's not a real complicated process. And I realize there are times that there are things that you know, can get kind of muddled and you get some doubts sometimes and you... Sometimes you have to discern some things and pray through some things to figure out what the Lord's doing. But the normal part of your Christian life is very simple. And uh, look here at Romans chapter 1. I want to say this first of all about this thankfulness is that unthankfulness and not giving God the glory 
is the root sin of degenerate nations. Look here at Romans chapter 1, verse number 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them, for the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, to birds, to four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves." That unthankful spirit, that unthankful attitude, that is the root sin of a degenerate nation. Now, if you don't know it, you're living in a degenerate nation today. You're living in this nation, of course, has not ever been a Christian nation. There are, were some people in this nation that did regard God at one time. More people did years ago. But the truth is, we don't have a Christian nation, never had a Christian nation. But unthankfulness is the root sin. Not just of lost people, but even of saved people. And uh, it's sad whenever saved people don't give God the glory that He deserves. Don't want to give Him that glory. Don't want to think about it. Don't want to talk about it. Don't want to pay any kind of a price for the Lord's sake here. But God tells you the reason a country gets in the shape it, that it's in is because it starts with them not being thankful and they take these steps down and God gives them up. And we didn't read the whole passage. I'm not going to get into all that, but that's where you get all the queers and all the stuff that's going on in front of your faces nowadays. It's just, it's just a natural step down and God doesn't do anything to change it because man, uh, man's not thankful. Now, you know what? That hasn't been a, a new thing that stepped up. It was like that from the beginning. Look back at Genesis chapter 3, if you will. Genesis chapter number 3. <clears throat> Here in Genesis 3, you probably know the story very well, but the serpent shows up in the garden to Eve. And they'd been given a command. The Lord told Adam that they uh, could eat of every tree of the garden. They could freely eat, but the tree that's in the midst of the garden, don't eat of it. In the day you eat of it, you'll surely die. And if you look down there, the serpent shows up to the woman and says, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Verse 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now you know what? Eve here has already got something going on in her heart when the devil shows up. And I know he doesn't show up as a devil. He shows up as an angel of light. He appear, he's very appealing to her. He shows up there as a, as a very handsome man to her and when he shows up though there's something going on in her heart because as soon as he asked her did God say you shall not eat of the trees of the garden her first answer is already an answer that shows she's not thankful you know what she says there we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden well she leaves out that word freely now you know what? why would you leave out that word freely you think about it. all these trees here they are planted in the garden all kinds of fruit, anything you want, man, you can go out there and just have it. Have all you want of it. Enjoy it. Do whatever you want to do. There's just one tree. You're not to mess with that tree. Just don't eat of that one. Everything else is yours. Man, you got the whole world. Everything. And you know what she does? She starts out with this thing of, well, we can eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but uh, there's one tree in the middle of the garden there that uh, we can't eat of, and... Then she adds to it, you guys, you know this, but she says, neither shall you touch it. Now, you know what? God didn't care if they touched that tree. They could touch the tree. They could climb the tree. They could put a swing in the tree, man. They could do all kinds of stuff in that tree. It's just don't eat the fruit of that one tree. And you know what? Things would have sure been different if Eve would have been thankful for what she did have. Think about it. 
If she would have just stopped and been thankful for all the other trees, instead of thinking, you know, God's not doing me right. Instead of thinking, you know, my husband got this from the Lord and maybe my husband's not doing me right. Maybe, maybe there's something more to this than meets the eye. I, I don't understand why that one tree I cannot have. There's some unthankfulness going on. Thankfulness makes all the difference. I mean, you're told in Hebrews 13, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Right? But if she could have just been thankful. And you look down in that passage there and the serpent says to the woman, you shall not surely die. And he gives her all this stuff that God doth know in the day ye eat thereof. Your eyes should be opened. You should be as gods, knowing good and evil. And then verse 6, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Why couldn't she just be thankful for what she had? wonder how often you as a child of God have, have stopped to realize there's all kinds of things the Lord has given you, all kinds of things the Lord has allowed for you, all kinds of provisions the Lord has made in your life, and maybe there's just one area where the Lord says, all right, not this. You can this, 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 but this one thing right here, this is not for you. I don't want you doing this. This is not for your life. This is not my plans for you. And instead of being thankful for what you do have, you get unthankful and you quit thinking about how freely God's given you so many other things. You leave the freely out of your own life. Instead of saying, you know what, God let me freely do this and freely do that. And man, He's good to me here and He's good to me there. Instead, you're sitting there saying, well, we can't even touch that. God doesn't even want us to touch it. We can't play with it. We can't do nothing. God's just being hard on us. Unthankfulness. You know what? A thankful spirit makes all the difference. And I realize here that Eve, once she got started down that road of unthankfulness, that thing became the root sin that led to her deception that eventually led to Adam, without deception, taking of the fruit there and going on with it. And now look at the mess we've had ever since. I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying we're all born sinners because of what they did. Thankfulness makes all the difference. Unthankfulness makes all the difference. You thankful for what you do have? Turn, if you will, and look at Jonah, the book of Jonah. You remember the story of Jonah in the Bible, and the Lord comes to Jonah there and tells him he wants him to go to Nineveh. And he wants to preach to them. And he wants them to cry against the city there. And in the book of Jonah, Jonah gets up and flees to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And I know there's all kinds of thinking there. I could go through logically what Jonah is thinking. And there's a lot of things that he's thinking that make sense. But then there's a whole lot of things that don't make sense simply because he's disobeying God. I mean, I know it makes sense to think, well, I don't want to preach to those people. Those people will be, our, our, uh, will be in bondage to them, and those people will end up with God while our country gets judged and all that kind of stuff. And he's all kinds of things going on through his head, logically speaking. But what if Jonah would have just been thankful for the call to preach instead of running? Instead of fleeing and going to the ship there where in verse 3 he goes down to... Joppa and goes uh, down into the ship and you know all the story there. He keeps on going down. He's down in the bottom of the ship and he's fast asleep. And the next thing you know, he's down in the bottom of the sea there inside of a well's belly. What if he would have just been thankful? Look over at chapter 2 of Jonah here. Jonah chapter 2 and verse number 9. Here he is in the fish's belly and he's crying out. And look what he says in verse 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. 
And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. How come for Jonah he literally had to die, literally had to have the Lord to take his soul and put him down in the heart of the earth and let him have a taste of hell before he came to the point of saying, Thank you, Lord. I need to pay a vow of thanksgiving to you. Thank you for wanting to use me. Thank you for giving me something to do. Thank you for even just looking my way instead of passing by. Would have been different, wouldn't it, if Jonah had been thankful for the call to preach? Wouldn't it have been thankful if he would have said, you know, or wouldn't it have been better if he would have been thankful for the fact that God wanted to use him to do what he was doing in that heathen country of, of Nineveh? I mean, you know what, sometimes I don't think we always realize that God wants to use you to do something that He could easily get somebody else to do. So there's always somebody else. You know, whenever you get to the point where you're just not quite willing and not quite thankful, you have to remind yourself that there's somebody else that God can use that they're just chomping at the bit for something to do. And all the Lord has to do is say, well, I'm just going to use them instead. Now, you know what? If Jonah would have been thankful for the call to preach, he wouldn't have wound up in the belly of the well. He wouldn't have wound up down in hell. He wouldn't have wound up just at the bottom of the mountains out here and cast out of the Lord's side and down there praying for the Lord to give him another chance. Notice what he says in verse 8 there of chapter number 2. He says, They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Jonah happened to realize that because he wasn't thankful that he had a chance to do something for the Lord, because he wasn't thankful that God wanted to use him, he believed a lie. And he lied to himself about what God would or would not allow him to do. He thought he could get on that ship and get away with it. And he couldn't. And he didn't. And he realizes here, I forsook my own mercy. Man, I need to sacrifice with the voice of thanksgiving. You know what? It would, have, it would have been different if he would have been thankful. And you know what happens? He comes out of that well and there in chapter 3, the Lord has to again tell him a second time, get down there to Nineveh and preach the preaching that I bid unto thee. And he goes and he does it. But you know what happens to him? He gets down there and sets off on the side and he Starts just watching what's going to happen. And you know what he keeps doing? He's sitting there counting it down. He's, well, all right, Lord, I preached. I don't want any results. I'm not expecting results. I'm not expecting anything to happen. I did what you wanted me to do. I did it. It's okay. I forced myself to finally do this. Now you kill him, Lord. Forty days, I told him. Nineveh would be overthrown. You know what happened? He's still unthankful. There's something in him that still is, is rather than wanting to see people get right, rather than wanting to see God show mercy, Instead, he's sitting there saying, all right, Lord, day 39, 39 days left. All right, Lord, day 25, 25 days left. Counting it all the way down. And when day 40 finally comes down to zero, you know what? The Lord doesn't do anything to him. And you know, he's upset. You know what? I don't know, I don't know any preacher that if you preached one sermon and a whole city got right, including the animals... They're fasting, man. They're in sackcloth. I mean, they're, they're all, everybody's getting right. That you wouldn't be happy about that. But you know what's going on? There's something wrong here. Yes, Jonah did what he was supposed to do. He went through the motion. He finally obeyed the Lord. But thankfulness had died inside of Jonah's heart. And he's not there saying, thank you, Lord. They're actually repenting. You know what? I couldn't even get Israel to repent. But these people are repenting. Thank you, Lord. That's not Jonah. And you get to the end of that book and you know what? You never know really what goes on with Jonah after this. The Lord asks him if he does well to be angry and he says, I do well to be angry even unto death. And you know what? I like to hope and think that somewhere along the way Jonah got over his big bad self and stopped and thought about it and said, you idiot. You have been given something that hardly anybody in this world has ever known, and that was one sermon preached and a whole town repented. I don't know if anybody's ever had that besides Jonah. Maybe somebody has, but he wasn't thankful. You thankful for what God's given you to do? You thankful for the mercy that God's shown you? 
You know what Jonah does? Because he's got this unthankful spirit inside of him, he gets more concerned over the gourd and over the worm and over the sun and over all the other stuff, just piddly stuff in his life that he's upset about. Why? Thankfulness has stopped right here. You know what, Christian? Thankfulness makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. Come over to Luke chapter number 15. Now I'm just trying to show you some places in the Bible here where thankfulness could have made a great difference. And it didn't because it wasn't found. Here in Luke chapter 15, again, all of these are very familiar passages, very familiar stories. I'm sure most of you, I know, have been in church and been in preaching most all your life, or at least for a good long time now. And so you know these stories. That's why I'm kind of skipping around through them. But here's the story of the prodigal son. But it's not the prodigal son that's got the problem here. I mean, the prodigal son gets right, he comes back, he does what he's supposed to do, he gets back with the father, he humbles himself, the whole deal. He's thankful for where he uh, finally got back to. He's thankful for the time that in the pig pen that the Lord showed him who he was and where he was with that and how bad he was, and he got back in. But you know what? There's an elder brother here at the house. And this elder brother, look at verse 25. His elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry. Wrong response, Christian. Now you know what? This is the elder brother. The elder brother didn't go out to the hog pen. The elder brother was In the father's house the whole time, he was where he was supposed to be, physically speaking. He was there all the time, right where he was supposed to be. You know what? It's not normal for somebody to get angry just because the prodigals come home. And the prodigal comes home here and he's angry. He wouldn't go in. says his father came out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. Brother, brother, uh, Adam Trostclair, I'll never forget the fatted calf sermon you preached a few years ago, man. That's a good message. I appreciate that, man. But anyway, uh, he says, uh, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Now, you know what this elder brother here, he's got a real problem, and one of his major problems is, is that he's stuck on himself. That's what his problem is. All that is a part of being unthankful. Notice the first thing out of his mouth when his father comes to entreat him is he says, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. You know what? When you start getting your eyes on you, and how everything is in your eyes, and how everything affects you, and how you feel about everything. You know what's going on? Thankfulness is starting to leave. Somebody's got unthankful. He says, these many years I served thee, and I didn't transgress at any time. Now notice, that's a pretty bold statement to say. I could not imagine telling anybody that I have served the Lord for years and years, and neither didn't transgress at any time. You think about that. That's some real pride there at any time. Now, you know what? The father in this story is a picture of God the Father. And you know what? The father wants him to come into this celebration that he's having. And here this guy is bragging about not transgressing. And you know what he's doing? He's disobeying the father right there on the spot. The father wants him to come in. And you know what he says? I've never transgressed you, father. I've not, and not at any time. I've never done anything that you didn't want me to do. And you know what? He's not in there right now. What's happened? He's unthankful. He wouldn't go in. 
You know what he does? He looks at it and he says, you never gave me a kid. Now, you know what you got to understand about this whole situation? The father is having a celebration here, and the father is glad because the father has been able to see his son come home. The party was not for the son. The party was for the father. The party was to give glory to the father because one of his children has come home, and there's rejoicing now in the father's house because this son has finally come home. And this elder brother gets looking at it and he says, well, I just don't think we should do all that for him. You never killed a kid for me. You never killed a calf for me. You never got my friends around and made merry with all my friends. How come you never had a day that was all about me? And you know what's interesting in that passage? The father never does really explain to that son, to that elder brother, he never does explain to him that, hey, this is not about your brother and it's not about you. He doesn't explain that to him. You know what he does? Because the guy is unthankful and selfishness has set in and he's just stuck right there on what somebody can do for him or has not done for him, because of that, this guy doesn't get the light. He doesn't get the understanding. He doesn't get the idea of the father throwing a party for his own glory. Now, you know what? When thankfulness begins to die out in your heart, you know what? It'll make all the difference in how you view what's going on in the Father's house. It'll make all the difference in how you view even what might be going on down at the church house. It'll make all the difference in what you see as far as the brethren whenever they're rejoicing over something. Or maybe even when they're crying over something. Or maybe whenever, you know, they're just getting together for something. It makes a difference whenever thankfulness has died. This fellow here is so upset. How's your thankfulness tonight? Do you look at everybody else and say, but what about me? But, you know, I never did anything wrong. What about me? Why don't you do that for me? You know what? It isn't about you. It isn't about whoever you think it's all about. It's about the Lord. And you have to stop sometimes and just be thankful and say, you know what? I'm a part of the Father's house and the Father wants me to have part in what goes on in the Father's house and I just need to be thankful that I can have a part in that. That's good for you. Just be thankful that you have a part in it. Here this elder brother here, he says, uh, this son has devoured your living. Verse 30. He's done this, he's done that, he's done this, and he's done that. You know what the Lord did? The Lord had forgiven all that. The father had forgiven all that. That elder brother stuck right there. He did this. How could you bless him, Lord? He's done this. How could you take him in, Lord? How could you restore fellowship? He did this and this and this. How could you take him back and give him the ring? He did this and this. I'll never forget those things. You know what? Sometimes thankfulness begins to die in your heart because you're not willing to forgive a brother or sister for something that you've been holding against them. And you know what? They don't even know that they did anything to you. That prodigal son didn't do anything to the elder brother. What did he do? He sinned against his father. He sinned against God and heaven and against his father. And he got it right there. And you know what the elder brother says? Well, I just don't like him being around here. He's got a problem. How much different would the story be if the elder brother would have heard about it and heard the music and the dancing and all of the stuff that went on in there And realized that his brother was there. And if he just said, thank God I've been praying for him to get back all this time. Man, it's good to see him back. It's good to see him getting right. Thank you, Lord, that somebody's got right with you. But instead he said, what am I going to do now? I've had this whole place to myself. I've got to share this place with this guy now. Well, I was fattening up that calf for me and my friends. Well, I was was close to the Father here. Now he's going to come in and he steals all this. That's a wrong attitude. Unthankful. Unthankful. Where does that leave you, brethren? You know what? Thankfulness makes all the difference. You get to the end of that passage, the Father says, Man, it was was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. And then it just... It just ends right there. You know what you never know? You never know if the elder brother ever went in or not. You never know if he ever changed anything. And the Lord left it that way. Why? Because He's waiting for you to make a difference. Thankfulness makes a difference. 
You can go into the party or you can stay the way you are. You can be stuck on yourself, worried about what you can get and what you can have and what's done or not done for you. Or you can thank God for all that He has done and let thankfulness make a difference. Come to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter number 17. Verse 11, it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee and as he entered into a certain village there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. You know, here's ten men. They're lepers picture of sin, picture of sinners. They can't help themselves. They can't fix themselves. They can't change the condition that their body was in because of this leprosy. And they cry out to Jesus Christ and they saw their need. That, that, that in itself is a miracle. They saw their need that Jesus was the only one that could help them. And they cried out, Master, have mercy on us. And He saw them and had compassion and told them to go to the priest. They turn around to go, and as they just turn around to go, you know what happens? Leprosy leaves, just like that. Now, boy, wouldn't that excite you? Man, if you had a debilitating disease like that that ate everything away and just left nubs for fingers and nubs for arms and nubs for legs and nubs for a face and all the stuff that goes on with that, all of the horrible, rottening stuff that goes on with that, if you had a disease like that and you turned around after one step in the right direction from the Lord and it all was gone as far as the disease is concerned, would that make a difference in you? You know what, you, if you're saved tonight, you've been healed of something much, 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 much more important than just leprosy. It's not just a physical problem. You've been healed of something in your nature, that sin that's in you. That sin has been forgiven. You've been given a new man. You've got on the inside a brand new man, bright and clean, who never sins again, though the outside just as filthy as ever. The inside's made new. What a great healing. That's way beyond anything on the outside. You know what? You took a step in the right direction and you believed on Jesus Christ. And you know what? As soon as you believed, what happened? You're cleansed. Sin's gone. Now you know what? Just the same parallel. Would that not make you thankful? Would there not be something about that just to imagine that, man, the sin is debilitating, it stops you, man, it it gets in your way, it was taking you to hell, it was something there you could not get rid of on your own, nothing you could do could make up for it, you could not pay for it, somebody paid the price. And once that thing gets applied to you, should it not make you turn around and say, thank you? Should it not change the way you walk From then on, you know what? These guys took a step towards the priest. That was the right step. And they knew right away, hey, the leprosy's gone. Something changed. You know what they did? They just kept on walking. And went on the same way they were walking. Except for one. And you know what that one did? He turns around and he realizes what's going on. And I can just imagine him you know, literally almost running back to the Lord and down on His face and grabbing a hold of those feet. Thank you, God! Thank you, Lord! Nobody's ever done anything like this for me. I couldn't get this anywhere. It's not that hard. Fell down on His face at His feet, giving Him thanks. You know what? He wasn't really the likely character to be doing that. He's a Samaritan. 
maybe all the other fellows kind of look down on him. Ah, he won't amount to much. He's the least likely to succeed, you know, like in high school, right? <laughs> but he sure did the right thing there. Gets down there and gets a hold of those feet and thanks the Lord. And the Lord told him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. You know what those other guys that are walking on to the priest, they're still healed of leprosy. It's gone. It ain't coming back. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone for good. But you know what? They're walking there and they've got nubs and they've got maybe places on their face that's ate out, you know, and, and maybe, maybe one of them's got a foot that's gone. He's walking on a, just a little stub down there on one foot. Maybe one, maybe one of them can't even walk. Maybe that's how far that leprosy had got. But the leprosy stopped. But you know what? That doesn't grow back fingers. You know what I mean? It's just the leprosy stopped. No more. No more is anything going to rot away. But you know what? That one that turned around and went back to Jesus Christ and thanked Him, you know what the Lord said? Something about you now with this, your faith has made you whole. He had enough faith to turn around and say, thank you. Thank you. You know what I believe? I believe whenever He got a hold of Jesus Christ, the fingers that were nubs became fingers again. The feet that were maybe turned and bowed and crooked up or even gone, they came back again. And that guy was able then to take a full body there and run around and do whatever he needed to do and thank the Lord with the right kind of a body now. Now you know what? I understand. That's a great miracle in the Jewish nation. Signs are for the Jews, you know. All right. So don't think you know, you're going to grow back all this stuff. That's not what I'm saying. That's what happened to him. And you know what? Whatever that scar was on his face, that spot that was ate out, whatever that was, it's, there's a nice flesh right there now and just looks just as good as ever. Wherever his eyes had went blind from the leprosy taken over, the nerves then are all healed and put in place. Why? The Lord says, you've been made whole. Why? Because he was thankful. Thankfulness makes all the difference. You know what, Christian? If you can be thankful... You know what you can do? You can have the Lord to restore some things in your life that sin has taken away. You can have the Lord to restore your relationship with Him in the way that it needs to be so that you as a Christian can be whole. I'm not just talking about being saved, but I mean there's something there about you just enjoying and abounding like we saw in Colossians, rooted and built up in Him, abounding therein, With thanksgiving. Thankfulness makes all the difference with that. You cannot abound as a Christian without being thankful the way you're supposed to be. It made one man whole. Jesus Christ looks around and He says, Were there not ten people here? Where's the other nine? Where where are they at? Where are you? Are you just walking on and thinking, Oh, well... It really ain't going to make that big a difference if I have the right heart attitude towards the things in my life. It really is not going to make that big a difference if I'm thankful to God. It really ain't going to make that big a difference if I get my mind off of myself when something goes on and just start thinking more about the Lord and maybe what His purpose. It really ain't going to matter. I'm saved. It doesn't matter anyway. But it will matter. Thankfulness makes all the difference. You want to be whole? You want to know that What you're doing with the Lord in thanking Him is giving you the right heart attitude that the Lord can show you and give you light and give you understanding on the things in your life that can help you with the bitterness, that can help you with the unforgiveness, that can help you with the selfishness, that can help you with all of the stuff that we've talked about tonight in the message and whatever else is going on in your heart. You want to be whole? Get a spirit of thanksgiving. An attitude of gratitude, as people say. Thankfulness makes all the difference. Would you let it make a difference in you tonight? Father, we thank You for the chance to preach Your words. Thank You for Your goodness, for Your mercy. Thank You, Lord, for just being willing, Lord, continually. To...